Marriage is often seen as the ultimate bond between a man and a woman, a sacred partnership built on love, trust, and understanding. It is meant to be a harmonious balance in which both partners support each other, regardless of the circumstances. But what happens when that trust is betrayed? When the foundation of a perfect union crumbles under the weight of deception? On September 1st, 2017, Lauren Hugelmeyer Phelps was brutally stabbed to death by her husband, Matthew Phelps. Matthew claimed the killing occurred under the influence of coracetin cough and cold medicine, an alleged overdose. But was this the truth? Was it a desperate accident or a calculated lie to justify an unforgivable crime? Lauren was born in 1988 and grew up with her parents and two sisters in Kentucky. Lauren was extremely close and tight-knit with everyone in her family, and they were also very religious and traditional. More specifically, she had a very close bond with her father Dale and her sister Beth. When Lauren was attending middle school, she went with a boy named Matthew Phelps. It's not specified if the two were friends or close at all, and it's more likely they just knew of each other. The two parted ways in high school since Matthew transferred and Lauren eventually moved to Raleigh, North Carolina. Later on in their mid-twenties, Matthew reached out to Lauren through Instagram and began catching up again. For a few months following their initial online reunion, the two began a lost distance relationship since Matthew was still living in Kentucky, whereas Lauren had moved. However, despite the hundreds of miles apart from each other, Matthew and Lauren's relationship began progressing quickly. Matthew started visiting Lauren in Raleigh and eventually moved there just to be with her. While Lauren and Matt began to fall head over heels for each other, most of Lauren's family was supportive of the relationship except for Dale. He seemed to have an off-putting feeling about Matt, yet continued to subside his feelings since his daughter was happy. Eventually, Dale's skepticism is finally justified. One night, while Matthew and Lauren are over at Lauren's parents' house for a game night, Matthew confesses to all of Lauren's family that he had already had a failed marriage before dating Lauren. This immediately confused Lauren's parents and they began questioning Matthew's character and integrity since he was so young and had already been divorced. Lauren's parents were primarily concerned for Lauren since she was someone who was dating to achieve marriage. Even so, she was hoping to share a life with Matthew shortly. The couple finally got engaged in 2015 and had their wedding the following year in 2016. The pair were both huge fans of the franchise Star Wars and incorporated it into their wedding theme. To the outside looking in, it seemed like Lauren and Matthew were the perfect couple and everyone's relationship goals. Lauren was constantly posting pictures of the two of them on her Instagram, so everyone got the perception they had a flawless dynamic. Unlike Lauren's family who is very tight-knit with her family, Matthew did not have a family like this growing up. Matthew was primarily raised by his grandparents as opposed to his parents. He had a single mother who was only occasionally around and his biological father was completely absent from his life. His mother remarried a few times, but Matthew was never able to form that father and son bond with any of his stepfathers. This flawed dynamic during such a trivial time in his life caused him to start acting out. When Matthew entered high school, he started hanging out with the wrong crowd of people and began abusing drugs and alcohol. More specifically, Matthew and his friends consumed coridison cough and cold recreationally. Like most heavy cough medicines, taking more than the recommended dose can cause a high, and this was something Matthew consistently took advantage of. This addiction began to spiral, and Matthew's grandparents eventually took Matthew out of public high school and put him in a private Christian academy to get his life back on the right track. For the time being, this worked well for Matthew. He started getting better grades in school and went off to college after graduating. He eventually attended the Clear Creek Baptist Bible College in Pineville, Kentucky, and seemed to have significantly improved from his early high school years. As the two continued with their married life together, more and more irreversible problems started to put a wedge between Lauren and Matthew. First and foremost, despite the fact Lauren's family was ultimately accepting of Matthew, Matthew's family didn't act the same way towards Lauren since his mother treated her very poorly. To name one incident, Matthew's mother came to his engagement party wearing a white dress and thus took away the attention from Lauren. For the majority of their relationship, Lauren and Matt's mother had a distant relationship due to the forced turmoil caused by his mother. In addition to his family, Matt himself demonstrated many problems that put a strain on his relationship with Lauren. 
Both partners had two different lifestyles growing up in their adolescent years, and it shaped them into being opposite kinds of people who may have trouble coexisting together. Lauren was a very hardworking and independent woman who worked multiple jobs at once to stay afloat financially. Some of Lauren's jobs included being an auditor, a daycare worker for her church, and participating in an MLM company. Meanwhile, Matthew did not like working and consistently had trouble keeping and finding jobs. A common cycle he would go through was Matthew would find a new job, start working, and then suddenly leave the job with little explanation as to what the reason was. Eventually, in what seemed to be an attempt to keep their marriage afloat and impress Lauren, Matthew decided to go back to college to become a pastor for their church. When it came to his inconsistencies of jobs, that wasn't the only factor putting financial stress on Lauren. Matthew would also spend money that was over their budget on frivolous things, such as electronics and gaming equipment. He would even go to the extent of stealing money out of their savings or cash out of Lauren's purse. According to Lauren's family, Lauren had approximately $10,000 saved before getting married to Matt. And then right before her death, she only had a little under $1,000 left in that savings. Matt's spending habits caused many fights between the couple, as well as kept them from pursuing things they wanted to do together. As mentioned before, the couple was a big fan of Star Wars and were trying to save money to go to Disney World. But every time a little bit of money was saved up for the trip, Matt would take it and spend it on himself. Not only did Matt take Lauren's money without asking her, but it was implied that Matthew may have also committed adultery. Lauren and Matt had a neighbor named Valerie whom Matt would often confide in and spend time with. There was one occasion, according to Lauren's sister Beth, when Lauren was talking on the phone with her while she was cooking dinner for Matt. When Matt came home from work, he said to Lauren he was going to go hang out with Valerie, and after he left, he texted Lauren saying, just eat dinner without me, I'm having way too much fun with Valerie. Despite Matt's casual attitude around their neighbor Valerie, this wasn't the same way he reacted when Lauren had friends who were men. Lauren and Matt also had multiple fights over jealousy, because Matt was worried there was another guy at their church he thought may have feelings for Lauren. These fights lead to Matt not being able to trust Lauren, for no real reason, and Lauren pushing back against Matt. At this point, Lauren was on the verge of leaving Matt and couldn't take his immature behavior anymore. However, her conflict came to a screeching halt on September 1st, 2017, when a 911 dispatcher received a call from Matthew in the middle of the night. I'm I'm, I have blood all over me and there's a bloody knife on the bed and I think I did it. At around 1 a.m., a 911 dispatcher received a call from Matthew who sounded like he was pretending to act delirious. Phelps claims he had accidentally stabbed his wife to death while he was dreaming, and suddenly woke up and saw his wife according to his side of the conversation with the dispatcher. I had a dream, and then I turned on the lights and she's dead on the floor. I have blood all over me and there's a bloody knife on the bed, and I think I did it. I can't believe this, I can't believe this, I, I don't even know what time it is, yeah, I can see her. She's 29. She's not breathing. Oh my God. Not long after this portion of the phone call, Matthew admits to why he is acting so strangely and giving a terrible excuse for his murder. I took, I took more medicine than I should have. I took, I took coridison cough and cold because I know it can make you feel good. A lot of times I can't sleep at night. Police arrived at the scene shortly after hoping to save Lauren, but she was pronounced dead upon arrival at the hospital. Later during her autopsy, they saw that Lauren had obtained 123 stab wounds. Meanwhile, back at the crime scene, everything about the decorum was very unsettling and didn't look authentic. The knife was set perfectly on the bed, as Matt said in the call, and the cough medicine was left laid out on the bathroom counter, supporting his claim to take cough medicine. Investigators said the way everything was placed looked staged. Furthermore, when investigators arrived at the scene, Matt had almost no blood on him, aside from some on his shoes and a few drops on his shirt. This comes off as looking suspicious because it was clear he tried to clean himself up. And if you feel as though you need to clean yourself up before calling 911, then you know you did something wrong. At the crime scene, Matt had a complete shift in his demeanor he spoke to the cops in a very emotionless and matter-of-fact way. For obvious reasons, the cops immediately took him into custody since he was the prime suspect. And it's more likely than not that Matt was the one who murdered Lauren. 
As mentioned before, Matt admitted to Lauren's family while he and Lauren were still dating that he had already had a failed marriage. After he and Lauren started fighting over jealousy and trust, Matt admitted the reason why his marriage failed was because his wife cheated on him. He claims that his ex-wife went on a missionary trip, met a new guy along the way, and then left him for the other guy when she came home. However, despite this story, Brooke Truitt, Matt's first wife, came forward and did an interview saying that wasn't true at all and this wasn't why the relationship ended. The real reason they filed for divorce was because Truett shared a lot of similarities in her relationship with Matt as Lauren did. When Truett was married to Phelps, she also struggled a lot with Matt spending too much money, not contributing anything to their life together, and Matt cheated on both Truett and Lauren multiple times. Also going back to before Lauren had died, she expressed to her family multiple times that Matt was very controlling over her and she contemplated leaving him regularly. But because she was so faithful to her religion, she wanted to make the marriage work and try to push divorce further back as a last resort. As investigators looked further into Matt's motives, they found a journal he had written in before he killed Lauren and talked about all of his adversities. He discussed how he had low esteem, was feeling insecure in his relationship with Lauren, and felt as if he didn't fit in well with her family. Another neighbor had been interrogated after Lauren's murder, who was a woman that they thought Matt flirted with. She remains anonymous, but has said that they were only friends and bonded over their similar struggles with depression and anxiety. But as they continued spending time together, Matt began talking about more morbid subjects, such as suicide and death in general, because he was aware that this friend of his owned a licensed and concealed gun in her home the last major piece of evidence for Matt's motives that investigators discovered was a secret Instagram account Matt had. The handle was Marty Radical, and even though the account is private to the public, investigators said the posts on this account contained Matt talking about the devil and demons. Many of the pictures on this account contained screenshots from the movie American Psycho. This was Matt's all-time favorite film that he was not only obsessed with, but he also idolized the protagonist in the film, Patrick Bateman. He loved him so much that he had his pictures on there of him dressed up as the character himself. Lastly, right before he murdered Lauren, he posted an Instagram photo with a caption saying, everyone thinks I'm a serial killer. Hashtag found an angel to kill. Finally, when the trial came, prosecutors used all of the evidence and information that was shared in the last section but also tried to argue that Matt knew what he was doing when he killed Lauren. This was mainly because once they got access to Matt's phone, they found his search history in his browser where he was typing in questions such as, how loopy does Coruscidon make you? And, have other people been high from Coruscidon? So from looking at these Google searches, it's clear this murder was premeditated since he was already planning on using the cough medicine as a scapegoat. Investigators also did a luminal test around their apartment to see if there was any of Lauren's blood that Matt tried to clean up before the police could see it. Sure enough, there were traces of blood everywhere. There was blood all over their bathroom and it was obvious Matt cleaned it up for the authorities. When it came to Matt's attorney, they didn't have a lot they could work with to defend Matt. Their main argument was that this wasn't in Matt's character and his reasoning for doing this was because he was in a more unstable and depressed headspace. The only follow-up with this argument is the court received a few letters from Matt's co-workers over the years, saying they never thought Matt would do something like this, and essentially arguing the same thing as the defendants. The trial finally came to a close on October 5, 2018, when all of Lauren's family and members of her church showed up to see Matt's sentencing and raise awareness for domestic violence. Matt ended up accepting a plea deal and pled guilty to the first-degree murder of Lauren and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. After his sentencing, Matt vocalized an apology to Lauren's family, but it ultimately means nothing to them and they cannot forgive him. Lauren's family continues to grieve her loss and they carry the weight of guilt for not intervening sooner in her troubled marriage. In Lauren's memory, her family has founded an organization called Lauren's Light, which seeks to raise awareness about abusive relationships and domestic violence they hope that through their efforts, they can prevent other families from experiencing the same tragedy that they endured. Lauren's story serves as a painful reminder of the dangers of abusive relationships and the importance of recognizing the warning signs before it's too late. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into World of Crime. 
we dive deep into the dark and mysterious, bringing you the latest and most gripping true crime stories from around the globe. If you found today's case intriguing, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our community of crime enthusiasts. Your support helps us continue uncovering the stories that matter. Have thoughts or theories about today's case? Drop a comment below and let's discuss. We'd love to hear your perspectives and keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe. I am Alex and you've been watching World of Crime. See you in the next episode.